Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Time for a little lesson on finding initial value slope and growth factor. So uh, what we're dealing with are linear and exponential functions, and you have to be able to look at an equation, a graph, a table, and a situation, and be able to identify what does it start with, how is it changing, and express those numbers according to what they stand for. Uh, and so as a reminder, initial value and y-intercept mean the same thing. It's like the starting point of your function. Both types of functions have this particular thing, right? Exponentials and linear have a starting point. Um, slope, this is the rise over run stuff. It's your um, how things are changing. Usually it's expressed as some kind of fraction, like it goes up 5 and right 2 kind of thing. Uh, linear functions are the ones that have a constant slope. Uh, exponential functions do not. They have what's called a growth factor. And this is just what it's timesing by. You know, if you have 3 to the x, that means it's timesing by 3. If it's something like divide by 7, your growth factor is going to be 1 7th. Because when you times by 1 7th, it does the same thing as divide by 7. And so uh, what we're going to do is kind of look at equations and how to find them, look at graphs, how to find these things, and look at tables and find that information. So we're going to start with linear functions. So when it's written out just as a, a function assignment, something like this, uh, the equation tells you a lot of information. One, if it's in this format, that means it's going to be linear. The number with x is going to be your slope, and the number not with x is going to be your y-intercept or your initial value. If you have an exponential function, it's going to look like this. It has something times another number to the x power. It having a power is an exponent. That lets you know it's an exponential function. And the number not with x is your initial value, just like on linear. But the number with x is your growth factor. And so... Uh, if we had an equation that looks something like y equals 3 halves x minus 2, our initial value would be negative 2, and our slope in this case would be 3 halves. Uh, if we had an exponential function that sounds something like uh, 1 third times 5 eighths, that's an 8, <laughs> to the x, uh, our initial value would be 1 third, and our growth factor would be 5 eighths. Um, your growth factor can be something like 7, or it can be uh, 1.08. Uh, it can be a lot of different things, uh, but you know it can be fractions and, and things like that. Uh, when you're looking at graphs, it's pretty easy to tell which one's linear. It's the ones that make a, a line. In math, all lines are straight. There's no like curved lines. If it's curved, then we call it a curve. Uh, all exponentials look like this. It has one side that's pretty shallow, and the other side is pretty steep. And we saw that while we were graphing them. So lines are all straight. Uh, to find the initial value, you just need to look at your y-axis and find out where it hits. In this case, it's going to be right here, which is going to be at 2. So my initial value is going to be 2. Uh, if I want to find slope on a line, you find some definite points. Uh, so this one already has some points on here. And you're going to draw a little triangle. How does it go from one point to another? along these, these grid lines here. Well, in this case, it goes up 4 and right 3. So my slope on this would be uh, 4 over 3. Whereas if I have a, a line looking like this, I can, again, start on my y-axis, find a point where it hits right there. That's going to be negative uh, 3. Uh, and then I have to find some other distinct points here. So it looks like these ones are points I can work with. It's going right 2 and down 3, so I can put negative 3. Uh, so my initial value on this is going to be negative 3, because that's down here. And then my slope on this uh, is going to be negative 3 halves, because it has to go down 3 and right 2 to get to another point. When I'm looking at exponential graphs, I need to find this information, what's the initial value and what's the growth factor. Again, initial value is still going to be the same thing. So you go to your y-axis. Find out where it hits. In this case, this one here, our initial value is going to be 3. Um, so we got initial value is 3. Uh, and then to find the growth factor, again, you need to find some points that you like know are there and find out what the y values are. So we're looking at here we got 3, and this one's at 6, this one's at 12, a height of 12. And going from 3 to 6 to 12, well, that's a pattern of times in by 2. So my growth factor in this case is going to be 2 because it's times in by 2. If I have an exponential looking like this, uh, again, I want to find out what my initial value is. It hits my axis right here, so it's going to be at negative 4. So I got initial value is negative 4. Uh, and 
I'm going to find other points I see there. We got negative eight, and over here we got negative 16. Uh, over here I got negative two, this one's negative one. Uh, and these ones are a little bit hard to tell, but it's getting smaller. But I'm looking at my pattern here, okay? I'm going from six, negative 16 to negative eight, to negative four, to negative two. Always go from left to right. Uh, and I see that I am getting smaller. It's dividing by two. Um, but my growth factor, you never put like divide number. Instead, you're gonna write that as a fraction. So if you're dividing by two, that is the same thing as times by one half. So my growth factor is gonna be one half. If the patterns divide by three, then it'd be times in by one third. If my patterns divide by five, times by one fifth. And that's gonna be my, my growth factor in this case. It's divided by two, so my growth factor is one half. And so usually that's the, kind of the easy part. The functions, the equations tell you all the information right there. On the graphs, you have to do a little bit of counting and figuring out how things are changing there, but you can still figure them out. Um, when you get to tables, those can be a little bit trickier because uh, sometimes not all the information is in the table. You have to figure it out, and we'll look at that in a second. But let's look at uh, what things look like when you have a linear table. Uh, when you're given a table, exponential and linear tables, just at a glance, look exactly the same. They're both x's and y's in a, in a table. But you have to find out what the pattern is. And so what you want to do is you want to look at your x's and your y's and see what's happening. Uh, my x's are going up by 1 here, and my y's are going down by 10. Uh, and this relationship here is the slope. So as I look at this slope, is going to be my y's go down by 10, and my x's go up by 1. So looking at negative 10 over 1, which is just negative 10. Uh, if I want to find my initial value, though, uh, on a graph, it's pretty easy to tell. It's where it hits the y-axis. But you have to remember that this has an x value that goes with it, and that x value is 0. And so when I'm looking at a table, what I want to do is I want to look through my x's and find 0. And my initial value is going to be the y value that goes with it. Uh, and so in this case, on this table, my initial value is going to be 60, because 0, 60 is the point in there. Uh, let's look at another table here. Uh, let's see, we have a gap here, a gap here. This one here may need to use a calculator, but it is adding one each time. Uh, add one, add one, add one as we go down our table. Uh, but my x's are not adding one. Instead, they're adding two. So add two, add two, add two, add two, add two. Uh, and so my slope in this case is going to be adding one on the y's and adding two on my x's. So it's going to be a slope of one half. Um, but my table here doesn't have this term here in the middle, this zero and then a number over here. Uh, and so what we will have to do is figure it out. Uh, and that's what's going on down here. At the bottom, you got a couple of options of how to figure it out. Uh, one is to just like count things. So if my x's are going up by two and my y's are going up by one, well, here I don't want to go up two. I want to just like go up one. So if I go up one here, then my y here is going to have to go up plus a half, right? So if the x's are going up by twos and y's go up by one, if x goes up by one, then the y would have to go up by a half. And that's the slope, you know, you use slope. Uh, and so I can take negative 1.5 and add a half to that, or 0.5, and I'm going to get negative one. So my, I'll know my initial value is negative one. Uh, another way to figure it out is to get, you know, figure out your patterns, figure out what the what's going on here is adding two, this is adding eight, this is plus three, uh, this is plus 12. So things are a little bit different here. Uh, but we got plus two and uh, plus eight again, uh, plus three, uh, plus 12. Uh, so this might not look like it's that consistent, but if you take these numbers over here on the right and divide by these numbers here on the left, you're gonna get the same thing either way. Because you can do 8 over 2, which is 4. Or you can do 12 over 3, kind of this matching here. And you also get 4. So my slope here is 4 uh, in both instances. Uh, and so what that lets you know is the y's are going to change 4 every time x's change 1. Uh, but I can also use that information here of my slope and put it into the equation so far. I know it's linear. So I'm going to put 4 in the slope spot, and I have this little equation. And what I can do is take any old point and plug in the x and y and find out what the b value is. So I don't, I don't know what the b is right now.
but I can take like the 0.725, which is here, and I can plug things in. So 7 goes in here, and then 25 ends up here. Uh, and I'm going to get a little equation to solve, which you know looks like this. Uh, it's 25 equals 28 plus b, and I can subtract the 28 over uh, and get that b equals negative 3. So it takes a little bit of solving, a little bit of algebraic skill there. Um, but it's an option. It's nice because it just gets you there. You don't have to like kind of count your way there. You just use the process. And so, uh, yeah, with linear tables, sometimes you don't have your initial value. You just have to figure it out. Um, if you look at your table, you're noticing it has a multiplying pattern, uh, like the x's are adding 1 each time, but your y's are not adding the same thing, right? It's not at 6 every time. Uh, it's doing something bigger. Uh, in this case, this one's times in by 4. Yeah, if you have a pattern of times by 4, that means it's going to be exponential. Uh, and this here is going to be your growth factor. So my growth factor is 4. Uh, and then, again, I can find my initial value just by looking where x is 0. So my initial value in this case is going to be 32. On this one here, I'm noticing things are getting smaller. Uh, my x's are still going up by 1 all the way down. But this is a pattern of dividing by 3 each time. Uh, remember, if the patterns divide, it is timesing by something but it has to be a fraction. So if it's divided by 3, your fraction is going to be 1 third, because if you times by a third, you're dividing by 3. And then my initial value on this, again, I look where x is 0 and find what the y is, which is going to be 7. And so hopefully this little overview of what's going on with the equations themselves, with the graphs, how to find initial value and slope and growth factor, and all three of these different representations help you out uh, with the practice sets where you're getting used to.